Hello everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to Art with Miss B. Today I'm going to guide you into a Zentangle practice. What is a Zentangle artworks? Zentangle are like a whimsical, very detailed and sophisticated patterns that they are made out of lines of different kind that creates a shapes. Usually they are organic shapes, biomorphic shapes, shapes inspired by the nature. The ones that we're going to do today will be in fact inspired by flowers and leaves and so nature. And I... Uh, since I like to listen to the feedback of people, my YouTube viewer and my students, which I see them on daily basis, so, so they are the best type of feedback that uh, an artist and an art teacher can receive. They, uh, you know, I ask them what they would like to practice more, and they are always uh, so fascinated by Zentangle, right? Composition, because they're beautiful composition and they can really transport you in another dimension. Some of my students and some of the beginner might get intimidated by the sophistication and all the details that you have inside and Zentangle. But once again, take like a Think of art like you think about a sport, like you practice and you practice and you practice and then you get better and better and better. You build a better coordination skills, fine model skills, uh, critical thinking skills, so you know how to make decisions faster and better. And really, your productions like uh, shows a better quality. So the Zentangle practice that we're going to do today and we might do again in the future is a wonderful exercise for you to train your fine model skills to get better in tracing a good quality of lines and different type of lines to use the space in a, like a, in a way that is like a fulfilling the design is giving you a sense of balance a sense of harmony a sense of rhythm and movement in that piece right and maybe even an optical illusion of space as well at the same time they are fantastic practices for our brain because they are considered mindful practices mindful practice as we did in the past and if you didn't get the opportunity to practice with me go back and you will find the many mindful and reflective practices all the way through january and february when i match each practice with a positive affirmation so you can always go back and do that but if you want to start with me today from the Zentangle. Uh, you will notice that you really need to stay focused and present and that really enhanced our capacity to focus and at the same time feel relaxed. So it's not a stressful focus that sometimes we are required to have in life. It's more of a reflective, stress-free type of focus. So it is fantastic. Now, there are different ways that you can use this video with me. First of all, this is what you need for this practice. Mix and media paper. If you're using your journal to practice, as I highly encourage you to do so, you can find the journal, art journal, very affordable everywhere, so you keep everything together. If you have been doing uh, practices on loose, on loose pieces of paper, remember to collect them in a folder. It's important for you to be able to go back and see the improvement and compare and contrast and make a better or different decisions, or sometimes uh, just to be inspired by your old pieces to keep creating something that reflects your artistic personality. So mix and media paper, a pencil for drawing, and extra fine markers. If you have Sharpies, use Sharpies. They won't give you the same quality than Micron markers, but as I say, the process is what is important more than the product itself. But then if you really like the activity and you want to provide yourself a more professional and more expensive materials, do so. There are different options at Michael stores, Hobby Lobby, online, through Amazon, to Bleak. You know, art supplies are quite expensive, but thankfully today we have very many, many options. So sometimes you find good prices for, you know, and good discount. Markers. Extra fine, you can use a couple, one finer than the other, or you can just use one marker. Mostly if you are a beginner, don't stress yourself too much about the difference between the markers tipped and just focus on 
learning how to create these disentangled designs and focus on the quality of your lines. When you do, the, like when you watch the video, you can pause after my instructions before I switch the camera. You can prep your material and practice with me. Or you can watch the whole video, maybe speed it up a little bit during the practice so you have a general idea and you see the final result and then you practice at your own time, pace and convenience. Or you can do it with me posing the video multiple times. For example, I will do the design directly with the markers on paper. Permanent markers are not erasable. So you need to feel confident enough to do the design just with markers. If you are a beginner, I highly encourage you to follow my lead, do it with a pencil first, then you can post the video, outline everything with the markers, erase the pencil, and then we keep going together. Hopefully makes sense what I just said. So pencil, marker on top, erase the pencil, and then keep going. If you feel confident, try markers directly on the paper. Just be prepared because the markers is, you know, you cannot go back and you cannot erase. You need to do you. So if you want to change something in the design, if you want to add the something because you are more intermediate advanced, feel free to do so. If you want to take away some details that there might be a little too challenging for you at this very moment, also do so. Remember that my video are meant to be approachable and accessible to any level, any age, and any type of really artistic personality. So I'm going to switch the camera, get your materials ready. I will also put everything in the description box and let's have fun together. I will talk a little bit during the practice, but it's really wants to you. You can really you know, understand what I'm doing, even if you want to put the audio off and listen to your favorite song, something that can relax you. So once again, you have to do you. I'm going to switch the camera so we can practice together. You can do the design with the pencil first and then go over with the markers. I'm going to do directly with the markers. But as I say many, many times, you have to kind of do you according to your level right and your skills so if you want to follow my design entirely you can do it with a pencil or directly with the markers if you want to change your stuff in the design you definitely have to do that if you want to add more details if you want to change some of the details if you want to eliminate some of the details you need to do you just what i want out of this practice for me it's important that you Stay focused for an extended amount of time on the same design. You are, this is a wonderful exercise for fine model skills, for mental skills, you know, to stay focused and at the same time feel relaxed. If you need to take a few breaks, you will take a few breaks. If you want to have a music, as long as it's nothing that distracts you, so I will go with something very relaxing and instrumental, you do you or you can do the practice in silence. And Centangle, this is how they call this type of design, our abstract composition full of rich details. So we kind of uh, keep it very spontaneous. I didn't really plan a drawing, so we're going to do it together and see what happens. We set the outlines for the design according to what we want. And then we're going to fill the design with details and other pattern, patterns. Yeah. 
you know, when you do petals, don't be concerned that the petals don't look the same and they should actually look very nice and natural. So kind of lose it up and let it go and see what happens. And I started to set some leaves. Start to have fun, including different type of lines. And we try to fill the space that we have available in a balanced way, right? So we don't have a too busy and not busy enough, but we have something that is uh, balance in the space. If you have markers of different tips, you can also alternate the thicker with the thinner. Or you can use just the same markers. And any brand that you have available, it's okay. Of course, the micro markers or other more professional markers, they will give you a better quality of lines. But for the sake of the process and the practice, as I said several times in my YouTube channel, even scholastic material will serve the purpose. Mostly if you are a beginner, beginner intermediate, it's totally, totally fine. Because if we wait to have the most professional supplies, we might risk that we never do the activity. And uh, one of my favorite quotes or motto is, uh, done is better than perfect. So let's not be too concerned about the perfect paper, the perfect quality, the perfect supplies, just like uh, embrace the practice and do it. You will always be able to do it again once you will become more expert and more familiar with this type of uh, art composition. You can buy yourself any supplies that you would like to and then you can do the practice again and maybe compare, right? Because definitely, the media that we use, the, the quality will definitely impact our product. But in this case, as in many other cases, mostly when we are learning, the process is more important than the product itself. So we want to make sure that we are just here doing this beautiful, whimsical, zentangle piece, learning of how to use the space 
how to combine together different elements of the design, what type of lines to use, what type of patterns we want to create, how much value pattern, which means how much completely dark and completely light area do we want to alternate in our piece. So let's stay focused on these element and principles. So let's stay focused on the process more than on the quality of our design and the quality of the supplies that we are using. These type of activities are called mindful and reflective practice because we really need to stay focused and connected to the piece for an extended amount of time. So sometimes our mind will trick us and it will go like daydreaming or thinking of what I have to do tomorrow or after this. And we need to really find, try our best, try our best to keep our mind here with us. So we can make a decision about the pattern, we can really focus on the quality of our lines, the rhythm and the pace that we want to keep for this practice. And they are really, really, really beneficial. As a teacher, I try to incorporate this type of practice and activity between a very big project to give my students a sort of a mental break, but also an opportunity to actually recharge their creativity. I use an holistic approach to work on their focus abilities as well. This is also a nice activity. If you do it with me, you feel like a little more guided. So you can copy some of my outlines and uh, you can make your changes, of course, uh, to adapt uh, this composition to your artistic personality. But I feel that it's a, a good way to learn uh, that complicated, apparently complicated composition are, after all, just made with simple lines. So with one of the most basic and most important element of art, the lines, straight lines, curved lines, it's just like a, an optical illusion that lines will give us at the end. So even something that sometimes looks very complicated and you might tell yourself, no, I don't think that I'm able to do it. It's too complicated. No, you just have to, it's a process. You can do it. And as I say, maybe the quality of the lines and the quality of the design at the beginning, it won't be exactly what you pictured in your mind or it won't be exactly like mine, but you keep practicing and giving a value to the process and the experience that you are having. Think about art as a sort of a sport, right? I always reflect about this. So we start, for example, when we are kid, we all play basketball and soccer because we have fun and we love it, right? Now, a very, very little percentage of us will become a professional basketball player or soccer players or volleyball player or 
any sport that you enjoyed and you still enjoy practicing. That doesn't mean that we stop practicing. I remember that I loved to play soccer with my friends just for fun, and I kept playing it as long as I wanted to, regardless the fact that I knew that I was not going to become a professional soccer player, right? That I didn't stand a chance, even if I wanted to. But that doesn't mean that we stop practicing sports. We still play with our kids. So we have a basketball court behind the heart. You know what I mean? Like, instead, for art, we all practice a lot of art as kids because it's part of our daily life. Many activities are hands-on in preschool or kindergarten. All the units kind of in, that they teach in school kind of include a hands-on activity. But then for some reason, since we know that we are not going to do art as a profession, and we won't become, or we don't want to become professional artists, we stop practicing art. We shouldn't. Art practices and art techniques come with so many benefits for our brain, for fine motor skills, critical thinking skills, mental skills, focus, relaxation, and so on and on. I could go forever with the list. So we should not stop practicing art just because we're not going to become Picasso or Van Gogh, right? Because we do not stop playing volleyball, or soccer or basketball, even after we clearly know that we will never become a, a professional in those sports. Mentality toward art should be exactly the same as that is toward sport, which is still not, but we are getting there. We are doing much better because we know better. And as a teacher, for me, as a fine art teacher, for me, it's very important to deliver this message. If you need to go slower, please go slower. You can always pause the video and then start it again. Just make sure that you don't rush yourself. You can always decide to watch the whole video and speed it up a little bit and then practice at your own convenience, maybe just with the music, because at that point you will know already what to do. Once again, I always tell you, you need to do you. I'm hope, uh, I hope I'm giving you a um, nice idea to fill spaces in a different way, just with similar patterns and design, but still doing something a little different everywhere.
Let's feel this space as well. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Do a line and you push little, like you see, I'm doing a line and then I push a tiny little circle. Let's see, so now let's do lines on the last leaf. Remember to keep a good posture, to sit comfortably, to have a good light. Remember to breathe in and out very deeply and intentionally. You can set the rhythm of your movement with your hands, with the rhythm of your breath. You can do that. I'm going to switch it to a thicker markers. I'm using a Sharpie. If you don't feel super confident, you can keep using like a thin markers. It will just take you a little longer to fulfill some area, but it might give you the, you know, it might allow you to be a little more precise and control that marker strokes better on the paper. Definitely a thicker markers like the Sharpie that I'm using, which is a regular tip Sharpie will definitely allow you to, to feel that some area of the design faster. You just need to be careful, outline the area first as, you, as I'm doing, and then carefully feel the space inside without leaving any gaps. Of course, when we do and we learn how to do Zentangle and this type of very detailed art, we want our a line to be really, really good quality, right? Because that is what will make the difference in the design and it will make our design look really nice and sharp. But as everything else, it's just a matter of practices. So the first time it might not happen, not the second or not the third, and then little by little, you will notice that that is happening and the quality of your lines is much better. The originality of your design, are, it's, you know, it's better just because you creativity is something that, you know, it's like you train, basically. So the more you practice creativity projects and exercises, the more creative you are, basically, and you will be. People sometimes can be afraid about what if I don't have any ideas, if I run out of ideas, honestly. You should not be afraid because the more you exercise and you stretch your creativity, the more ideas you will have. This is why I also insist with my students and with all of you as well to keep track of what you create and have everything organized in a journal. If you do not own a journal and you're doing it on loose pieces of paper, keep them all together in a folder because you can look back at these pieces that you are creating and then you will be able to create something different yet similar so you can use them as inspirations and we all need inspirations even the greatest the master they all got inspiration by their own work somebody else's work and so look at your old pieces is definitely something that will help you
sometimes a feeling the space between the design is a little pain in the neck, but it's worth it at the end because the design is so pretty. I should probably get the thinner marker, but now I don't want to stop my flow because I'm so into it and I'm going to keep using the Sharpie. But as I say, feel free to switch for a thinner marker so you can best feel the spaces. I think that for this design, I'm going to go over the outline of the petals, make them a thicker and darker. Feel free to use the, to do the same. I wish that, you know, I feel that we have so many lines that I want to have so, also something like a little bold and plain to settle and to contrast the movement of all the lines that we traced. Second flower to go. that I want to have a little more of plain black to contrast to the white of the background so we create a nice balance and a nice value pattern so we know that value is the dark and the light lighter shadows the way that you want to call it so a value pattern is the alternation of area of darkness and area of light I also feel that I probably would do this one in black as well. So I create this balance between these two opposite areas in the design. Mm. And I love the sounds of the the sound of the marker against the paper and the smell of Sharpies. Leave over here. I'm showing you different techniques that you can use the markers and you can color. Now we go back to our thinner. Let me see if I can add the 05. There we go. And now we're going to 
use some dots. So, so far we have been building the whole design with lines of different type and we have been creating the pattern just using lines. So once again, it's fantastic. It's mind blowing, right? The fact that with just one element, lines, in this case, so we can create a beautiful artwork. Now we are doing dots, which are still part of lines, so. We're still using one element and a black and white palette. So we reduce it at the bare minimum so you can focus on one element at a time, right? Making dots, for example, like the ones that we are doing, it's a fantastic exercise for mental focus and endurance. For me, it is a challenge. I definitely find it more natural to stay connected with lines than with dots. Sometimes I will feel the frustration. So it's a good, good mental exercise to stay with the activity, even when it becomes a little frustrating or difficult. So we stay with it. And we keep going. Stay with me, we're almost done. I'm gonna do dots here instead because in this one we have a little it's a little different than the other, so we can do dots. Stay with it, almost done. And now probably to kind of uh, connect the two pieces of the design together, you can leave it like that or you can play around with some lines, for example, that will kind of amplify the sense of movement and rhythm of the piece. And enrich it a little bit.
just by curving a line, we can give an optical illusion of space and an optical illusion of movement as well. Just with one simple element. It's really good. Oh, sorry. I have to move the camera a little bit. Sometimes you see I'm so focused that I tend to forget everything else. Just be careful, don't go inside other detail of the designs that are already completed. I'm going to stop here and then probably just here, last uh, final space to fill. And uh, you could have left the whole thing white. I actually loved it with white background. I'm giving you an alternative if you want to fill the space a little more and kind of reinforce uh, this idea of rhythm of movement uh, and the space illusion. And I think that our design is all done. I wish I could see yours. I'm gonna switch to the camera to say goodbye. And I, you know, I see you soon for another practice. Okay, friends, we are all done with our first Zentangle practice together. I hope that you enjoyed as much as I did. It was a tremendous exercise for the lines, the quality of the lines, a different type of lines, and also understand how can we feel a space in a balanced and harmonic way. Um, I wish, uh, as I say all the time to, you know, I wish I was able to see your beautiful creation, you know, in my YouTube channel, that is also the link for my Instagram account. Feel free to really reach out to me because I'm really curious sometimes to see how you made it through the practice, what is the product that you created, 
feel free to send comments and feedback and ask questions. I will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Please consider to subscribe. Oh, sorry, consider subscribing to this channel. Uh, it's you know a beautiful community that we are creating together, and your support means a lot to me. So if you like the content and you like the effort, the energy that I'm putting into it, please subscribe, like my videos, comment, and share. Uh, with your friends. I see you very soon with another beautiful practice and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day wherever you are. Ciao a tutti!